Welcome to Highline BI 348 class video number 31. Hey, if you want to download this file, BI 348 chapter two and a half, import to finished or the start file. And also, you want to make sure and download the zipped folder with all of our files we're going to import. Go ahead and click on the link below the videos, and you can download these. Now, we want to start off by looking at our files. Here's the folder name. Here are the files. And these are different than our last three videos where we had text files. These are Excel files. Now, we're going to be using the same Power Query get from folder feature. But unlike text files, these Excel files will take a couple extra steps. Now, I actually want to go look at one of these files. Control down arrow, so about 200,000 records in each one of them. But there's a key characteristic of each one of these workbooks. There's only one worksheet. Now, in a later video, we'll see what to do if we have multiple worksheets. All right, so I'm going to close this, and we're back to our import 002. We want to import from a folder. So we go to Power Query, From File, From Folder. Same dialog box. We click the Browse button. Navigate to our folder, and we're telling Power Query to get all files in this folder. I click OK, click OK. Now I'm going to give it a smart name. Import Excel files, one sheet each, sales data, and Enter. Now, unlike the last few videos where we had to filter by extension, we're going to only have .xlsx files in this folder, so we don't need to do that. And we want to come over to Content. And like we did in our last few videos, right click, Remove Other Columns. But because Excel has lots of potential objects, tables, sheets, defined names, we can't just expand this like we could a text file. We actually have to add an extra column to get the Excel data. Add column, and we come over here to Add Custom Column. And I'm going to call this new column Get Excel Data. And we come down here, we're actually going to use a Power Query function. Excel.workbook. And hey, they named that one pretty smartly. Open parentheses. And over here, here's our column. I'm going to double click, close parentheses. That will create our extra column. When I click OK, there it is. Now we do not need this column right here. Right click, remove. Now look at this button right here. This has got two arrows pointing off to the side instead of down. When I click this, it will expand. And it's actually going to give us different parts of this workbook. When I click OK, we have columns like kind, which will tell us whether it's a sheet, a table, or a defined name. Item, which is our sheet name, and a few other items. Now here, if this is our sheet name, right? We do not want this sheet one. So we're actually going to filter. And we're going to use the text filter does not contain. And I'm going to say does not contain, because we were careful naming our sheets. Anytime there's a workbook that has a sheet, because the default names are sheet one, sheet two, sheet three. So anytime there's a sheet that does not contain that, it will be imported. Now that default sheet is gone. Now this column has the dot data, so we're going to right click, remove other columns. Now we click this Expand button, OK. We can see that unlike the text import, which put the first row as column headers. It didn't do that here, but no problem. Up in the upper left-hand corner, there's a little drop-down you can click, and it says Use First Row as Headers. Now, that only took the headers from the first file. Remember, we have three files down here. So we have to do our same trick. Pick which column has the fewest unique items, and then click on the filter. We see a unique list, but Anytime we have a large data set, you'll see Load More. And you want to click Load More. It tries to go down. You can see it's having a hard time. There's a lot of data there. We finally get our unique list. And we always look for the field name. Here it's City, and then Date, Sales, Store ID. So we're looking in this column for City. When I uncheck to filter, that means down below when it found all of the field names as a record. When I filtered out city, down below it will filter out city, date, sales, and store ID. Now I click OK. 
we have our steps. We have our name. Now we can go to home. And we're going to close and load to. And we're actually going to put this in a table, even though it's a huge amount of data. And the reason we're going to load it to a table and not to the data model is because if you load it to a table, you're allowed to group. And if you add it to the data model, you cannot group, like group by month or group by numbers to get a frequency category. Now, and next week, we'll talk about how to get around that in the data model. But we're going to load this big data set to the worksheet because we need to group. So I'm going to click Load. Wow, and it took a while there, but it loaded over 500,000 rows of data from those three Excel files. If I click in the top cell Control down arrow, you can see we got over 500,000 rows. Control Home. Now, we made a mistake in our query, and we saw this in an earlier video. Power Query makes it easy to go and edit. So I'm going to hover, click Edit right here, or right click Edit. And I want to go through. And what we forgot to do was look at each column. And when I click on this, you can see up in the Home ribbon data type, it says Any. I'm going to make sure that it thinks that this is data type text. And right here, Date. Look at that. It said any. And I really want this to be a date. So the data type is date. For the sales column, I'm going to say data type decimal number. For store ID, data type text. Now the cool thing about this is I can reload this. And if you look, it's not going to let me close and load. It already knows where it's going. So I'm just going to click the close and load. And it is re-importing it. Look at that. And sure enough, it re-imported it with the proper data types. Now let's go look at the finished file. You can see we want to make this report right here. And actually, we've done this a few times. So this should be quick and easy. I'm going to come over with a cell in our data set, Alt-N-V. I'm going to put it on this existing sheet. I think I'm going to put it in G1. Click OK. Now we actually want to group sales. So I'm going to drag sales down to rows. Instantly, we get a unique list. Right click down to Group. It shows us the min and the max. I'm going to start at 0. And I'm actually going to go up to 270. Now watch what happens. Earlier videos, we made sure we did the min and the max. But this 270 is like 100 below the actual max. And what the pivot table will do, it will say greater than 270. Now the reason we're going to do that is this is a frequency distribution. And there's a few small counts in the upper category. So I'm going to group them all into that last one. Our increment is going to be 30 when I click OK. Look at that. So we have our increments of 30 and greater than 270. Now I can drag sales down to values. It will not default to sum because this revenue field is grouped, so it defaults to count. I'm going to be sure and give it a proper label here, because remember, when you do pivot table grouping, the upper limit is not included. So 0 to 30, 30 to 60. The 30 is included in the second category if it runs into a $30 transaction. So I'm going to give it a good label, dollar sales. And in parentheses, the lower limit is included. Home, and then go up to Wrap Text. And now I'm going to type count of sales is fine. F2 to put it in edit mode, but I'm going to put the years 2014 and 2015, because there's a lot of data there. Same thing, I need to come up and wrap text. Now I'm going to click in a single cell and make a histogram. Insert column 2D. Delete this chart junk. Right click. Hide all fill buttons on chart. Click on the column. Control 1 to open up the task pane. Gap width 0. You can add whatever formatting you want. I'm going to do this blue down here. It's kind of off the screen. It's like a vibrant blue border, solid line, maybe black. I can close this for the time being. Click over here, and we have our green plus. I'm going to say axis titles and, and data labels. That means if we have data labels right here, delete. That's chart junk. I'm going to click on the data labels in Control-1. I want to add some number formatting. Number. Let's look under the category. I'm going to say number 
not two decimals. I want zero decimals and tab. Now I can close these, click on Axis, the horizontal equal sign shoots me up here. I'm going to say that label right there and Enter. I don't think I need that because I'm going to indicate what the, the count is up here from my chart title, Equal, and click on Count of Sales 2014 to 15. All right, wow, so we created histogram that shows us the shape of the data. It looks like, of course, for retail we often have large frequencies in the early categories, but it looks like a little kind of goes up and then tails off. And sure enough, we have that greater than 270 category, which is catching instead of in increments of 30, this one is catching from 270 all the way up to past 370. You can see there's only 446 counts of sales above 270. Now, one last thing, we want to go take a look at the file size. So there it is, 15 megabytes. And if we control down, all right, that's 500,000 rows. Ah, but what is the reason? The reason we did that is because we wanted to group. And you cannot group a number field like this, whether it is sales numbers or dates, if it's in the data model. Now, next week, we'll see a way to get around that. You, you build a type of lookup table. But if you want the beauty and ease of that grouping feature in a pivot table, and you can withstand 15 megabytes for this file, then that's the way to go. Hey, so in this video, we definitely saw how to use Power Query to import multiple Excel files, consolidate them into a single table, and then pivot table with grouping and a histogram. Now in our next video, we'll see how to import multiple Excel files when there's multiple sheets in each. All right, we'll see you next video.